Wildlife habitat can be improved through a practice called FSI, or Forest Stand Improvement. While the primary reason for FSI is to improve wildlife habitat, it can also offer you increased timber production. We'll show you why FSI should be done and how to perform it. This forest is a good example of a site where FSI will improve habitat. Here, the trees are growing close together with a closed canopy. It allows little sunlight to reach the forest floor. There are few plants on the forest floor and little to no shrubby vegetation. And while it may be pleasing to the eye, it doesn't provide the best wildlife habitat. After FSI, a forest may look similar to this one. You'll see the open canopy with room between the tree crowns. There's a lot of herbaceous and shrubby vegetation at ground level. It provides excellent wildlife habitat. Deer browse is greatly increased. Escape cover is provided and nesting cover is good for turkeys and other birds. For timber production, FSI removes poor quality trees and undesirable species to create less competition for light, water and nutrients. Higher quality trees can thrive in this environment. For starters, think of FSI like taking care of a garden. First, you take out the weeds. In a forest, you'll want to remove trees that are undesirable because of poor form, disease, age, or species not suitable from a wildlife or timber aspect. Thinning is good for a garden or forest. If you have too many plants and leave it alone, your plants won't grow very fast or large. Same thing for trees. Now let's look at some weed trees from a timber viewpoint. There are trees with poor form, like this one, with a big crook in the trunk. Trees with defects, including too much branching and knots, are considered weed trees. Look for trees that are diseased or vulnerable, like old, overcrowded red oaks. And there are suppressed trees that won't respond or grow larger, even if the taller tree is removed. Other weed trees to consider cutting are sweet gum, sassafras, honey locust and elm. These trees only provide a limited value to wildlife and are not usually worth much from a timber standpoint. Trees that you do not want to cut are ones with nesting cavities, snags and good quality timber and mast producers. When you're ready to thin out undesirable trees, you have several methods to choose from. The 10-foot rule cuts smaller or inferior trees within 10 feet of a good tree. Another method is to measure the desired tree's diameter at four and a half feet off the ground. Remove surrounding trees by doubling the diameter in feet. So if a tree's diameter is 10 inches, clear all trees within 20 feet of it. The crop tree management method removes any inferior trees whose crown is close or touching the crown of the tree you want to keep. The most common technique is to simply cut down the unwanted tree with a chainsaw. The stumps can be treated with a herbicide to prevent resprouting. If stump sprouts are wanted, be sure to cut the stump low to the ground. If you find it is unsafe to drop a tree since it could easily damage remaining trees, try girdling a tree instead. Cut two rings around the tree, about two to four inches apart, with each ring's ends touching. Cut through the living bark and tree tissue to kill it and create a good snag for wildlife. Eventually, the tree will decay and fall on its own. Another method is called hack and squirt, which is safer than using a chainsaw. Using a roof hatchet, small cuts or hacks are made in a downward motion around the tree. One hack for each three to four inches of DBH, or as directed by the herbicide label. A small amount of herbicide mix is placed in each pocket. The tree dies and creates snags. However you decide to remove a tree, always practice safety. Hard hats, safety glasses, gloves, chaps, earplugs, and sturdy boots are important protection. Wildlife may be our primary objective for doing FSI, but you should also know that it can be compatible with timber production. 
This log veneered, uh, it's 12 feet long, uh, 19 inches at the small end, and it was just sold for $376 to a veneer buyer. FSI allows a more open tree canopy. More sunlight reaches the forest floor, which is good for wildlife and offers less competition for healthier trees to grow. Still, there are some situations where wildlife and forestry objectives are at odds with each other. Vines provide an excellent source of soft mast for wildlife, but can smother quality trees and reduce growth. Live trees with holes make nesting cavities for wildlife, but will not likely be of value to timber production. Some species like chinkapin and shingle oaks, hickory, persimmon, plum, and others provide good food sources for wildlife, but sometimes offer very little commercial value. However, if wildlife and timber production are important to you, it shouldn't be difficult to balance between the two needs. Cut vines off the best and most valuable trees, but leave vines on cull and snag trees. Leave trees with holes unless they are in direct competition with more valuable timber. Forest stand improvement will make a healthy forest. Understanding which trees to cut, how to go about it, and practicing safe methods will help deer, turkey, and even salamanders thrive in your forest.